Today, I'm going to attempt to tackle the Frigate NVR card. And when I say tackle, I mean talk through it in a video. There's a lot of stuff you can configure with it. And I was on the fence about putting together a video anyway, because there's just so much you can do. And everything is pretty specific to the environment you want to run it in. But I thought, hey, what the heck, y'all asked. And so I'm going to make a little video on the card and go through some of the configuration options and how I have it set up. So let's jump right into it. Before I get started, let me explain to you what Frigate is in case you don't know. And by the way, stay tuned to the end of the video where I explain a couple of things about what I think about the card versus some other options such as Birdseye. All right, so Frigate is a, an NVR solution that you can install in Docker. You can install it as a Home Assistant plugin, uh, different ways you can run Frigate. It is an NVR solution, and I'm using the word, the letters NVR loosely. Your definition of NVR may vary based on your experience. This is a recorder where you can set up all your cameras to record 24 by seven. Two of my cameras do that now, so I could call it an NVR. It does object detection with local processing, which means that you can use uh, something like a Coral TPU as a TensorFlow unit to process the objects in real time very fast. You can use CPU if you have enough horsepower, depending on what you install it on. You can use other newer versions of object detection detection, such as your GPUs and some other libraries. And that's covered in my other video where I talk about the latest versions of this. By the way, I have a whole playlist on uh, Frigate. So if you're interested in more stuff about Frigate, just go ahead and look through that. So you can do a uh, false positive tuning. You can set up zones, just like any typical NVR, you can do stuff with that. So that's what that is. With the Frigate card, the Frigate card actually lets you do a bunch of stuff. This is a Loveless card that you install in Home Assistant. And it has these features, live viewing of multiple cameras, clips and snapshot viewing uh, via the mini gallery, automatic updating, showing the latest clips and snapshots, support for filtering, all kinds of different features that you can see right here. It does have full picture element support and it is theme friendly. There are a ton of screenshots down below uh, that give you lots of examples on how it works. So I'm gonna go through some of my settings and how I have it set up. Before that, of course, we always need to talk about installation. You need to use HACS. If you don't use HACS, you need to install that in Home Assistant first if you're gonna use the card, regardless of where you have Frigate running, and I have it running actually on a Dell Optiplex, but I still use the HACS to get to the Frigate card stuff. So install HACS, I have a video on that as well. If you want to uh, look through that, it'll tell you what that means. And then there, there is the manual installation. There's a lot of configuration options. One thing you need to note is at least one camera must be configured in the cameras section. Otherwise, all the configuration parameters are optional. Rather than talk through this right here, let's go ahead and jump over to my dashboard here where I have a card already installed and we'll talk through some of that. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and remove this and then I will just reinstall the card again. So let's go ahead and add a card. Click the blue button down here for add card. And then you'll see, search for Frigate, custom Frigate card. If you don't see the option for the Frigate card, you need to refresh your browser, shift F5 or whatever to clear your cache. Sometimes these things don't show up unless you do that. As long as you've got all the installation stuff done for HACS and gone through those steps. All right, so like it said, like it says, you must have a default camera or a single camera. It has a generic camera in here. You can change this to one of your other cameras. And I will just pick, uh, let's go with one of these here. That one right there. All right, and then if we wanna do something like um, live view for your provider, you need to select a live view if you're gonna run this in the live view mode. If you've installed the GoToRTC stuff like I showed in the previous video, you'll have it as a selection. You can use WebRTC card if you've got that configured that requires a little bit more configuration than just what we're doing here. You can also choose Home Assistant Video Stream and it will detect and use the, the one it thinks is best. For this, that does give you a, a table of which ones are uh, or what they do, how to use them best. And here's an option down here on this particular live view section. It gives you the options here, HA, HA when configured with low level HLS or low latency HLS, native web RTC, et cetera. And it tells you which ones are good for latency, frame rate, loading time, and installation. So go to RTC has best frame rate. Um, what's it say here? Best latency, high frame rate, it has a loading time of better and the integration or installation is built in. 
I don't see a, a image is best, but you're not going to run an image unless you're just doing a single image versus a live stream. So all these are better. I like it to load fast because I want it to pop up whenever there's activity uh, pretty quick. So we'll go with that. Uh, where's it at? Go RTC for our live thing or a live provider. Title for this camera is auto detected from that. It'll show it as driveway. You can select an icon if you want to. Unique ID for this camera. I don't use any of these options right now, but they're all outlined within the page, uh, the settings page. Again, there are so many options. I'm not going to cover every single one of them. You can hide the camera in the UI. Uh, camera engine options. You can go to frigate options. Since this is a frigate camera, it does require frigate. Uh, you can set the camera name. Again, this is auto detected from the entity. Frigate server URL. If you want to use the menu options, you need to specify this. That's all it's for is just for the menu. Everything else that happens goes through Home Assistant's uh, or the Home Assistant entities. So um, you can set labels and object filters. So if you wanted only person, you could set that. If you wanted to set zones, close in, or whatever your zone is called, you could set that as well. So I'll leave all this blank because I want the whole area to be um, to happen to, to trigger the card. Uh, so I just leave all that alone. Uh, frigate client ID. If you're using more than one frigate server, you can actually specify a frigate client ID. That's beyond the scope of this video, but uh, you can read about it. And then you can also use motion eye if you want to do that. Uh, where did I lost it all here? Frigate options. Here's motion eye options. If you're running motion eye, you can do the same thing with this card. So it's not just for frigate, but also for motion eye. And you can go through all the settings for motion eye here as well. Live provider options go to RTC options. You can choose different modes, MSE, Web RTC, MPEG4, or Motion JPEG. So you can choose one of these as your Go RTC method if it's available to you in your frigate setup. I'll leave it blank as default for now. If you want to do images, number of seconds after which to refresh a live image, image your URL to use instead of camera entity snapshot. So it'll do a snapshot or it will go ahead and it will show you um, the, the whatever this URL is you put in here. All right, I don't set any of that stuff right now. Dependency options, you can show events for all cameras along with this camera if it's triggered. So. If you have a driveway and a porch camera, anytime you show the events for one, uh, it'll show the other one on here. So you can set that up as a dependency option as well. Trigger options are important. You can trigger by auto detecting, detecting the occupancy sensor. You can also trigger by auto detecting the motion sensor. So if you want all motion from the frigate camera to be a trigger to make that um, display, that camera image display, then you'll check both of these. I actually leave this and turn this off and I want to trigger from other entities. So I want it to trigger from my driveway, all occupancy. I have different sensors set up for uh, frigate and that's one of the sensors that I use. Anytime somebody is in that all occupancy area, pretty much if a, an object is detected in a frigate zone or all zones for that camera, it will trigger that camera. So this is how I have mine set up. You could leave this and this and not put anything here and trigger, but you'll have to experiment with that a little bit. I didn't initially get anything when I selected just this. I had to actually put in the binary or the trigger here. You can use other devices to trigger. If you have a motion sensor in your living room and you want to see the bedroom camera or the outside camera, you can make this, uh, you can set it here and then this camera will trigger on that display. So you have all kinds of different triggering options you can use for that. Uh, so that's basically the, the camera section. The view section is a whole nother area. So default view, I want to go to live view. Actually, no, I do not. I want to go to static image, uh, which is here. And that puts up my frigate screensaver image. And you can select a view for newly selected cameras. Do you want a live view, a clips gallery, a snapshot, all of these different things. You can show the most recent snapshot, for example. Uh, you can, um, if so if I select the camera here, it'll show me the most recent snapshot. You can do dark mode, on, off, or otherwise. You see it dims a little bit there. You can set it to auto as well, or just nothing at all. I've used dark mode. I thought it would dim the screen a little bit and then bring it back up. But what happens is it stays dim all the time. I don't know if that's a bug or the way I had it set, set incorrectly. So I just leave it 
as off, and it doesn't really matter to me how I do that. All right, so reset to default X view after seconds. Let's go in here and look at this. This is a little bit um, something you need to really think about a little bit. So this is under the view section. If we scroll down here to the view section in the options, and you can see how many options are in here. It's ridiculous. This is a this is a beast of a card. So camera select, we talked about dark mode, we talked about timeout seconds, which is not even specified in this yet. Um, but if you come over here, and these titles don't always match what the YAML actually shows, but timeout seconds is the number of seconds of in inactivity after the user interaction. So if you're playing with the card, touching the card, after you let go of it, this is how long it will be before it goes back to its default view. And remember, we set the default view as static image, which is this bird screensaver. You can pick any image you want to here. You can put a URL or something else in here. Later on down, you can see where to do that. Uh, update seconds, number of seconds after which to automatically update, refresh the default view. So if the default view occurs sooner, in other words, manually, the timer will start over. Zero disables this functionality. So under update seconds, uh, is it even in here? You almost need to go look and see what these things here show. Let me put something in there. So I will put 10 for that and 20. And this is what I mean by the, the values sometimes don't match what the, the book says. So we have timeout seconds and update seconds. So coming over here, we have timeout seconds and it's called something different in the UI. And then we have update seconds, which is called something different in the UI. So update seconds, I want it to return back to the uh, default view after let's say five seconds. So I come over here and I'll set this actually to five seconds. This one down here, Zoom it in. set that to five seconds. I'll go back to the visual editor. Now you can see refresh default view every X seconds. So it'll go back after five seconds. So there's some other settings down here that will, I will use to not use these actually after all, but I just want to show you which ones are which and what they do. Force card updates, ignore user interaction. So you can force the card to update whether automated card updates should ignore user interaction. So if you don't want to deal with inter user interaction, if someone comes and pushes the screen, like your kid, my kid comes up and starts pushing all these buttons, you want the card to go back to its default state after so long you can actually tell it to ignore the user interaction and force these card updates. And then you can cycle through cameras when default view updates. And that one here, when set to true, the selected camera is cycled on each default view change. So it'll go back to the camera, this camera or a camera when the change changes. So if, it, if you have a camera that starts running and it goes over to a view and then it switches back to the default, this will actually send it back over to that camera on that thing if you have multiple cameras in your frigate card. See what I mean? This, this is this card is this is like the the custom button card of camera cards. It's a lot of things, and you have to really kind of play around with it a little bit to really understand how you want it to work. So this is where you set it up and you watch it. And if you don't like the way it works, you come back and you tweak it and you watch it again and you tweak it again. This is the fun part for me anyway, is going in there and just fine tuning it just the way I want it. I have full control over how I want the thing to work and how I want it to display. And the use cases depend on what you're doing. On a wall board, for example, I want it to do something different than maybe a tablet sitting on the desk here where, uh, man, I look like I'm falling in a hole, don't I? Some weird view issues here. Anyway, I, I think um, this is just an excellent card to be able to set it up however you want to use it. All right, so that is the view, and I'm going fast, and I know I'm going fast, but we have a lot of options to cover in this short little video. Menu. The menu style is all over the place as well. You can have a hidden menu, so then when you click on this, it pops up like that. You can have an overlay menu, so all your menu items show up here. You can have a hover menu, so when you hover over the card, which doesn't work well for tablets, by the way, so I don't use hover at all. Or you can have hover menu card wide, not sure the difference there. I can tell you though, if you come down here and read all this stuff, it will tell you all of these things. I think I skipped over scan mode. We'll go back to that in a second here. 
So if you want to have a menu, I recommend hidden menu, and then you just have to click this button right here. And then you can come over here and do your menu position, left, right, bottom, top. So there's my menu in the bottom now. I can put it over on the right. So I click it here and then it comes down to the right. Uh, I like it on the top left as the default. And then you can do the menu button pixel sizes. So I can start making that menu button massive or I can make it tiny or I just delete it and get the default. And all these buttons here can be on the frigate menu, default view button is enabled. You can disable it. You can align the button. So that's this thing right here. You can set the priority. You can set the icon and all kinds of changes for the button, button camera. So each of these, each of these buttons, if you were to click on this and you have camera, uh, you have user interface, timeline, live view, clips view, snapshot gallery, all of those can be controlled here. You can put them in different places. You can change the size of them. You can change the icon. So you have full control over how those buttons look. Let's take that off of there. I want this to be hidden. Now it's on the left for some reason. Let's do um, menu alignment line to the top. Hmm. Oh wait, I did it wrong. Position, get rid of that, get rid of that, and then it should go across. There we go. All right, so you can change all those buttons as well. Let me go back up here to something I forgot under view. This is the most important piece, and let me add another camera before I do that. You can add additional cameras just like you did the first one. Camera front porch, live view is going to be again. Go to RTC, everything else remains the same. Forget options, you'll need to use this uh, stuff that I did for the first camera. And all of this can remain the same as well. And then live provider, I leave as option or leave it as, as a default. Now I have two cameras in here. If I go down here to view and I scroll down to scan mode, this is what happens when, or this is what you'll use if you want the camera carousel to move when something happens. So if I hit scan mode enabled, I can also show a pushing pulsing border when triggered. Reset the view to default after untrigger. And this is the one you're probably most concerned with if you have one card and you have multiple cameras and you want to scan through those cameras. So seconds after inactive time. And then we go back up here because I saw this, I skipped over all of this. Uh, let's go down here to scan mode. Scan mode allows the card to automatically follow the action as they call it. In this mode, the card will automatically select the camera in the live view when an entity changes to an active state, either on or open. The entities to consider are defined by your camera configuration, which we talked about in triggers. And actually, I forgot to set the trigger for this camera, didn't I? So cameras, front porch, trigger options. Uh, we can do that. And then I want front porch for my camera trigger. So binary sensor, all occupancy, cats, that one right there. Okay, so now I've got it configured. And then... An untrigger is defined as the state for all configured entities returning to inactive. So if they go back to an active state, they're untriggered. And then you can wait an optional number of untriggered seconds before it reverts back to the default view. And in this case, the default view is that static image. And you can see here that something triggered this already. So if I go to view and scan now, and I set this to after untrigger 10 seconds, now what will happen is scan mode's enabled, going to show me a pulsing border when it's triggered and it will reset the view to default after 10 seconds after an untrigger. And you'll see that whenever it happens up here. So that's the scan mode. It's pretty intuitive um, for the most part. Some things to remember is triggering is only allowed when there's no ongoing human interaction with the card. If you're touching the card or messing with it, it will not trigger and nothing will occur until the card has been unattended for that timeout seconds we set in the, the view global options. And also remember the scan mode tracks the changes. So if you, if you refresh the screen and something is going on in one of the camera views, but it hasn't actually changed state after you refreshed it, it won't do anything. The card has to change state when the card is active. So it's always sitting there listening for cha state changes and then it will actually make a change or display the camera whenever it makes that trigger happen. All right. so. A bunch of different things you can do here. 
enable or not, whether or not the card shows a visual indication that's triggered, that little pulsing deal. Uh, and then what else here? Untrigger seconds and a number of seconds to wait after all entities are inactive. That brings me to a point. In that list of entities, any of those entities you uh, have under this card, camera section for trigger, you can see it's pulsing here now. Whoops, sorry to reset. Under any of these uh, trigger entities, you can choose multiple. So if I want the driveway activity uh, to trigger, both of these will trigger that camera, this front porch camera to display in the card. And then both of these have to be clear before that card actually returns to an untriggered state. And then additional 10 seconds has to go by before it considers itself untriggered. All right, I'm getting long-winded here. All right, we did view, we did menu, we did, uh, let's look at live view options. Preload, live view in the background. This is where we get into stuff that may be CPU, a little more CPU intensive. Uh, we'll skip all of this stuff here and we'll go to the live options. So preload is whether or not to preload the live view. It causes the live view to render in the background regardless of what view is actually shown. So it's always available. It's instantly available, but it means it's always running your CPU up to be able to have that always available. Autoplay tells it to automatically play live camera feeds. Never will automatically play. Selected will automatically play when a camera is selected in the carousel. So if it shows in that carousel, if you're pushing it by hand and pulling it up, it will then play it. Visible will play when the browser becomes visible or all on any opportunity to automatically play, so in either case. So some of these providers like WebRTC and just MPEG do not support prevention of automatic play. So those will always be running in the background. I encourage you to read this page. If you're configuring this, you're not gonna remember all these things. I have to go back and re reference this page. And yes, people uh, have commented that I read too much in my videos but I can't remember every single thing on here. So I definitely do go and read through these when I'm making a video so that I'm sure I'm telling you the right things. And then we have auto pause. Whether to automatically pause the feeds, never will automatically pause, unselected will automatically pause when the camera is unselected, hidden will pause when the browser tab is hidden, et cetera. So it's the opposite of um, playing, auto playing, it's auto pausing. Auto mute. So it will never, uh, let's see here, all. So it's set to all by default. It will mute when the browser tab becomes hidden or all on any opportunity. So if autoplay is enabled, the stream may mute itself automatically in order to honor the autoplay setting as some browsers will not autoplay media that is unmuted. So you've got a little browser thing you've got to think about there as well. Uh, so these are the options you can use auto unmute Lazy load, these are important, whether or not to lazily load the camera in the carousel. Setting it to false causes all cameras to load simultaneously when live carousel is open. So if you go over here and this start, this becomes open, all of the cameras will lazy load. Um, it will cause all cameras to load continually if both lazy load and preload are true. This results in a smoother carousel experience at the cost of a substantial amount of stream data. So you're always streaming data in this one. I don't like the lazy load because if I have two or three tablets running and they're all lazy loading, I'm pulling a lot of data over the network for no reason. Uh, unload is the same, is opposite when to lazily unload the cameras. This only works if lady, lazy load um, is, turn, is true, it otherwise ignores this. So just read through this here. Draggable, whether the carousel can dragged left or right via the touch, swipe, or mouse. Uh, it is defaulted to true, which means that I can probably drag this. Yep, I can drag it back and forth. Only when there's a camera active, apparently. Um, transition effects and show image during load. If true during the initial load, the image live provider will be shown instead of the loading video stream. The still image will auto refresh and re replaced when the live stream is loaded. So you can do this as well. That might be preferential to show something is happening while you're waiting for a live stream to load if your live streams are slow. Uh, actions to use for the live view, controls, and the layout. All right, so live controls um, are all set here. We're not gonna preload live in the background. We're gonna be dragged and swipeable. They are lazily loaded. I don't wanna lazily load anything. 
Uh, and these are the options you can set for all of these un unloaded, lazy unloaded, play live, pause live, mute live, et cetera. I leave these all as default and turn off lazy loading. Show still image while the live stream is loading. I have that set to now. You can do live controls. Next and previous thumbnails, pop up tile controls, et cetera. So I could do thumbnails uh, as that. And then it will tell me thumbnail mode, thumbnails above, below, to drawer to the left, et cetera. So I could do below. I find that on a tablet, it takes up a significant amount of space. And so I don't really like the thumbnails here, but you can choose to use them if you want to. I just turn that off completely. Uh, you can do next and previous as thumbnails, or like I said, other things here. Um, live layout, you have an option here for live layout. Media is contained, letterbox, media expands proportionally to cover the card. Media is stretched to fill the card. So, I don't like stretching, but we're gonna do live layout expands to fit the card. So we'll see what that looks like. And then we have media gallery where we can do a bunch of stuff with the media gallery and the media viewer. Now for the sake of this video and its length, I'm gonna skip over a couple of sections that you can experiment with on your own, things that you don't necessarily need to do to get up and running uh, initially, but there are things you can fine tune to make things look better or however you wanna do that. One of those is the media viewer. Viewer for static media clips, snapshots, or recording. You can tell it to automatically play, automatically pause, and all these other things. The image is one thing I'll talk about real quick. The image view mode is going to be the embedded frigate logo, and it's by default, so you could actually leave it alone and not do anything. You can set a st static image URL for image view, a number of seconds after which to refresh. So if you're, you've got an image up there that you want to continually refresh, I don't know, you can even put a radar a view of like your local radar or something like that. Maybe a camera from a, a highway or something or a, a mountaintop you wanna watch. You can have this update that URL every so many seconds. Let's like say every 60 seconds you get a new snapshot of your mountaintop ski resort camera, a live cam from the beach or whatever. I'm gonna leave it for the embedded frig frigate logo for now. Embedded frigate logo. And if you leave that off, it's defaulted to that anyway. Timeline style, you can set the timeline on a single ribbon or stacked and clustered events. Uh, you can also set the default length of the time view in seconds, the count of events in which they're they clustered. Zero equals none. Uh, dimensions, you can set your aspect ratio. It either adjusts to the media, it's a static aspect ratio, which you set down here, or unconstrained aspect ratio. I leave that blank as well and let it do its thing. And then performance is what I want to talk a minute about. Let's go down here to performance. Let me see if I can find it quickly. Performance options here. These options control the card performance settings to enable the card to run smoothly on lower end devices. So you could run that. If you're running this on a Pi, you may want to consider lower end stuff. So your profile is whether it's high or low. And you can look at the low performance profile here that says the card attempts to lower the CPU and network consumption by setting default option values when they have not been set by the user. If you set a bunch of options in the configuration, it will not overwrite those, it will keep them. So if you're having performance issues, get rid of the options you set that deal with things that this will control Principles used in the selection of options are get out of the box performance similar to the basic Home Assistant picture glance card. Only change behavior that the user can case by case reset by explicitly setting an option elsewhere. Do not break the visual aesthetic of the card. So since the performance profile changes the default value of options, if you set the low profile on a card, um, it could have no effect if you've already made a lot of changes on the card. So you might, if you're having problems with performance, you might, might wanna start fresh, add a camera, leave it all alone, set the low performance profile and see if that helps you at all. There are a exhaustive list of options set by the low profile mode. It says to look at the source code for those. So um, you can go through and do all of that. Feature options, animated progress indicator, if you're, um, if you're doing something with uh, low performance, maybe you don't want to have animation do that either. And then style options, curves or shadows, you can turn those on or off. And then just save everything and now you have a card here. You can just click on done up here. 
Now, if you want to play around with this, it is possible to go into those entities that you set. So if I go into my Home Assistant instance now, and I go to Developer Tools, I can find the state of one of my sensors, so binary sensor, front no, driveway, driveway all occupancy, click it here. You can either walk in front of the camera or you can do this. Uh, you can come over here and set this to on. And it's gonna be hard for me to show this. Let me try showing this. So if I set this to on and I click on set state, you'll see this image up here change. So set state to on, and now it's triggered that. And now you can see that it's triggered the driveway camera. And see what I mean? These are options, that timing option, when we talk about setting the timing options in here for the various options under uh, view, if I get rid of these and set them back to defaults, save that, and then I come over here and I do that trigger again. Now it's triggered. And we'll see how long it takes before it goes back. I set the other option to untrigger after 10 seconds. Um, now remember that when you do this this way, you immediately um, go to unstate. When you set it in here, it's going to go back to an off state pretty quick. So that 10 seconds you set it, um, or that that when you set it on there, you've got that 10 second delay that it's going to use. Just keep in mind when you're troubleshooting the easy way or the lazy way like I just did, it may not be exactly the way it operates whenever you're doing something. The other thing you can do is while that's up and running, you can go to your other camera and also force it to show up and you'll see that it switches. Let me, let me do this again. So I'm gonna set my driveway to, uh, to on and then I'm gonna go try to, to find, you see above here, it did it. I'm gonna drive front. I see if I can do this in 10 seconds. Front porch, all occupancy. Uh, here it is. Set that to on. Oh, am I gonna make it? And set it, you'll see it change up here. Now you see the carousel has changed. And I also have the ability to switch between these two cameras. And because I have user interaction set to uh, ignore user interaction, uh, it will not, it will automatically put it back to the default view. If I leave this like this and I start messing with that camera, so I could set any one of these two on, you'll see now that I can switch through these different things. And supposedly, according to the documentation, if I am interacting with this card, it shouldn't do anything uh, to go back to default state. And I can just keep clicking through these things as much as I want to and see them go back and forth here. Now, if I stop interacting with it, it should go back after a few minutes, I believe. Now, if I've turned off the option, which I think I did to disable interactions, then it will probably not go back to its default state. So if I go over here and edit this dashboard, and we look at my settings here, and notice it's back to the frigate thing. It's because the state did not change while I was uh, loading, the, or before I loaded the card, or didn't change after I loaded the card. So if I go to view and I say reset the default after user interaction, if I put this to 20 seconds, well, let's put it to five again, save that. And then I force it, there's, there's interaction. So if I go here and I start messing with this, now I should have after user interaction, five seconds later, I should actually uh, go back to the default view, something like that. Okay. Well, as usual, I've created a monster of a video. It's very long um, and it has a lot of stuff in it. This frigate card's pretty much a monster, right? It's the beast of, of cards. And so it has a lot of options to talk about. Play around with it, see what you think. You might like it. I did say I, I would mention a couple things at the end. One of the things I don't know how to get around is the fact that if somebody walks into my driveway, for example, and they walk up onto the porch, it's going to trigger the driveway first. You'll see it on the carousel. And then it will trigger the, the porch, which is because that state changes second. However, it doesn't go back to the driveway, I don't believe. Or if someone's on the driveway and the porch, I can't see them both at the same time. With bird's eye, which is the whole um, the deal that comes with frigate. Uh, let's see here. I can show you the bird's eye deal. Uh, with bird's eye, then you get this 
window here and any cameras that you have configured to operate within Birdseye will show up in this window and they'll show up side by side in here. I don't see how to do that with the frigate card. And that's the one thing I don't like about the frigate card and I haven't figured out. There may be a way to do it. And if you know how to do that, comment down below or let me know in Discord. It just seems like um, this, uh, this frigate card here or this bird's eye card will give me a better overall view of multiple things happening in multiple areas at the same time versus the follow the action type thing that is the bird's eye card or the frigate card. It only shows one camera at a time and kind of follows to the action. Somebody walks around your property and they hit every one of those cameras, you'll be able to follow it that way. But if they stop somebody in the front, then someone goes here and someone goes here, the last camera triggered is what's going to show on the thing. And the other two can do whatever they want. You'll never see it. So not sure about that. Again, if you know how that works or a better way to do that, let me know. Yes, there are ways to run multiple frigate cards, one camera per card, but bird's eye is a better thing when you're talking about real estate on top of a wall board for putting on your wall to control home assistant or look at stuff. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Again, super long. If you're still here, thank you for watching to the end. Uh, again, a beast of a card takes a lot of talking to go through it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below on discord. If you like the stuff I do hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up or the bell icon. There's no thumbs up. Is there or the like button? Yeah. Hit the like button. And for channel members, thank you so much for supporting what I do. If you want to continue to support me or support me and you're not a channel member, hit that join button down below as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.